Hello, and welcome to this film, which is all about Hess's Law. It's the seventh uh, in a series of films about the standard level energetics topic. And whereas I suppose recently we've been looking at experiments that we might do to measure enthalpy changes, we're now going to look at Hess's Law as applied to chemical reactions and see how it can actually allow us to find the enthalpy changes for reactions that are not easy to carry out. Okay, so let's start off by looking at what Hess's law actually says. Okay, now this isn't exactly what it says at the top, um, but it amounts to exactly the same thing. So if you know that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, um, then you basically know Hess's law, because Hess's law says that the energy change for a chemical reaction is the same regardless of the route taken. This is not a law that you have to be able to quote in the IB exam, okay? but you do need to be able to use it. And what it basically implies is that if I go from A to B, it doesn't matter if I go from A to C first and then from C to B, the energy change should be exactly the same because energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Or in other words, you can't get something for nothing. Okay. Now, if we look at how we can use this law to calculate an enthalpy change, let's try this using these cycles, these Hess's law cycles first. So I want to know what the enthalpy change is when I go from A to B. But I can't, for some reason, do this reaction, so I can't measure the change. All right. Now, if I know the enthalpy change involved in going from A to C and from C to B, then I can easily find this because I can just use Hess's law to say that this enthalpy change will be the same as x plus y. I might get a slightly different looking cycle, and as an SL student I don't really have to construct these cycles too much, as an HL student I do. Um, but if I knew that going from A to B was the unknown enthalpy change, and I know the enthalpy change of going from A to C and from B to C this time, well, let's think about what's involved in going from A to B. It involves going from A to C first, and then from C to B. Well, if I know the enthalpy change of B to C, let's say, and I know that it's, I can make it up, it's exothermic, then going from back from C to B involves exactly the same size enthalpy change, just a different sign. Okay, so in other words, going from A to C and then C to B involves going in the reverse direction to y, so minus y. So this unknown enthalpy change here is equal to x minus y. And let's just do one last example of finding an unknown enthalpy using a cycle. And that's where I want to find the enthalpy change of going from b to a. Okay? And I know a to c and c to b. What do I have to do? I have to go from b to c first and then to a. So I'm going against y and against x. I'm doing them in reverse. So I'm going to say that the unknown enthalpy change is equal to minus y plus minus x, which is minus y minus x. OK, so that's using cycles. What we're going to do now is going to try and find these unknown enthalpies using maths. Right now, I suppose really and truly using cycles involves maths as well. But what I'm saying here is that we can do it without using a cycle and just by crunching some numbers. And this is really quite a useful shortcut that comes up a lot in standard level papers. In higher level papers, you tend to have to construct the cycles yourself. But anyway, let's have a look at what's going on here. We want to find the enthalpy change for this process. A plus 2B turns into C and D. Okay, And I happen to know the enthalpy change for A plus 2B turning into E and F. And I know the enthalpy change for E and F turning into C plus D. Now what happens if I add these two equations together? Well I find that A plus 2B plus E plus F turns into E plus F plus C plus D. And if I add those two equations together then I can add those two enthalpy changes together. So this is delta H1 plus delta H2. And what can I do here? Well, I can cancel out the E and the F from both sides. What have I ended up with? I've ended up with A plus 2B makes C plus D. And that's exactly the same as this equation here. 
So the unknown enthalpy is simply delta H1 plus delta H2. Now that was quite an easy one to do because in my known equations, A and 2B were on the same side as my unknown equation, and so were C and D. So let's just have a look at an example where things aren't necessarily on the right side. And in this one, I'm going to have my unknown enthalpy change here, the one I want to calculate, as A plus 2B turns into C. And I know the enthalpy change when A plus 2B turns into E, and I know the enthalpy change when C turns into E. Now what I'd like to do here is end up with A and 2B and C on the same size of the arrow in my sum here. So what I'm going to have to do first of all is I'm going to have to flip this equation round and turn it into C, oh, sorry, into E turning into C. And what's the enthalpy change for that? Well it will be minus delta H2 because I'm going in reverse. Okay, now if I add up this equation and this one here that I've just written, I'll end up with A plus 2B plus E makes E and C. I can cancel the E's and I'm left with A plus 2B makes C. What's the enthalpy change now? Well, it's delta H1 plus minus delta H2. So delta H1 minus delta H2. And so my unknown enthalpy is simply delta H1 minus delta H2. Okay, now I'm going to be going through some specific examples of both these methods in the next film. Okay, but hopefully for now, you understand what Hess's law is. You don't necessarily remember how to quote it, because that's not important. But you know in principle how we can apply it to cycles and to kind of mathematical, or purely mathematical without cycles, methods of solving enthalpy changes. Um, I would urge you, first of all, to have a look at some of the examples before you say to yourself that you can't do this or that you don't understand. Um, but if you do have any questions or comments, please feel free to come and see me or to post something on the YouTube channel.